This week's podcast is a good one. I've got their head vegan coach in, Alex. We're going to talk about how to consume uh, clean vegan protein because customer services ask this every day. Yeah, well, it's a big question that I get asked every day. I mean, vegan and protein don't really go hand in hand. I still don't understand how vegans get their protein. Let's go. Welcome to the Body Science Podcast, bringing you everything you need, want, and should know about health, fitness, nutrition, and training. As always, the information contained in this podcast is for the information purposes only and is not designed to diagnose or be prescriptive to treat, prevent, or manage any injury, disease, or other health-related condition. Today's podcast is brought to you by our new Clean Bars. We spent countless hours sourcing only the best, high-quality, nourishing ingredients from trusted suppliers and getting the balance between nutritional value, taste and texture just right. Made with all natural ingredients you can feel good about, like plant proteins, fruits, seeds and nuts. Simply bursting with quality protein, antioxidants, fibre and healthy fats, plus a 100% vegan friendly. And the taste? Divine. Welcome to Body Science, the house of fit, happy, healthy. And I'm going to add on the end of this, like I do every week, vegan. I've got my favorite vegan here. I've got my man I go to. He's He does a lot of research for the company. A lot of people don't know that. Alex is definitely a person we go to to find out wider in the community of what we're doing well, what we're not doing well. And one of the things that's come back from Alex and customer service is you need more flavors. 100%. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I well, want more flavors as well, just for me to, to bake with, to, to mix with, you know. It's around first quarter of this year. Okay. Yeah, first quarter of this year. What's yeah, happening? Yeah, I'm not going to throw a March date on it specifically because, you know. I'll get too excited. Well, we don't just buy ingredients, mate. We're very consistent in what we buy. So I want to make sure we've got the right product landing. Have mentioned that Choc Peanut is one of the ones landing, but we're also doing a Choc Caramel, oh. which was left off. So yep. Choc Peanut, Choc Caramel. I'm very excited about that because Salted Caramel blew my mind. Yeah, it's Choc Caramel good. will too. Yeah, it's good. Have you tried them yet? Yeah. I final say stuff. Yeah, but yeah. I come back with all your research and all your feedbacks and all that and look at it before we get uh, it has it, has it been finalized? It has. Oh, wow. That's exciting. Took you long enough, but we've done it. <laughs> For every vegan out there, look look forward to this. It's all about variety, mate. And that actually suits very well with my new little concept of uh, Meat Free March. Meat Free March. So if you're listening to this, definitely jump on board and try it during Meat Free March because it's a win. Meat Free March. Well, we better make sure that happens uh, with some Body Science Social too because we need to support our vegan community. And can I just add, while we're thinking about vegan community, in 2019, there were 600 thousand vegans. Do we know that? And that's 1.16% of the or worldwide? No, worldwide. And that's 1.16% of the whole population. 1.16. Yeah. Minority group. Well, it's the minority of the minority if we're really thinking about it, but it's just pushed outside the minority of it the minority. It has a large, loud voice for a minority group. Yeah. And it's just overtaken um, vegetarianism. And I've been reading, mate, a lot less meat being consumed these days too. Yep. Well, you said yourself just earlier that you're not giving it up. I'll never say that publicly <laughs> on the podcast, Alex. <laughs> But, Seriously. you know, it's 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 lower than it, it may once have been. It is. And, like, I've, I'm talking to a lot of people in my age group, and obviously I'm 50 plus, and definitely living two to three days plant-based and smashing meat on yeah, the weekends and, and, and having fun Yeah, I think it's necessary stuff. as well with the whole options of getting uh, <laughs> vegan protein in these days, which is probably a good lead into clean vegan protein by Body Science. My favorite, personally, the salted caramel, which I'm stoked that you're getting more flavors, not because I'm sick of these flavors, but it's nice to kind of mix it up. Well, but- you picked it, so I hope you like it. <laughs> Oh, I will. Every vegan will like this flavor. Peanuts, chocolate, you can't go wrong. It is. It's a massive issue of contention being (laughs) vegan and protein. How do you get it in? What's the best way to get it in? Supplements, where do I go? As someone who isn't vegan, how do you feel? I love our vegan protein. I actually drink it as well. But uh, look, to all you vegans out there, I apologize. I love whey protein too. But I do get a better satiety feel when I drink a vegan protein. I feel satisfied. You got It's got a different mouth feel. Mm -hmm. I mean, ours ours tastes good, as you know. I'm not going to say that all vegan proteins have a different mouth feel. Some taste like chalk. Yeah, but that's it, it comes down to what the brand does and what their ethos is and what they're about. You know, we, mm. people don't understand. We made our first vegan protein back in 2009. Mm. We've been doing it for a long time. Actually, tell them what that vegan protein was in as well. What do you mean like that? How was it packaged? That was packaged in a recycled cardboard packaging with recycled tin and it had a recycled label in it and it used organic ink. El- organic ink. We were the first to bring that label in, first to use that organic ink. Those cardboard type packaging have been around for a little while. The problem with it is it's not recyclable. So it sort of fell into a 
a hole of what are we doing here? Like we're using this, it looks like it's recyclable, but it's not. So Yeah, which is why you also went down the road of this thinner plastic. Yeah, well, that's what we've done with the current vegan protein. We've gone to a, a thinner wall. But look, depending on when this comes out, there's some really cool things we're doing in this area. We're not meant to say this, but we've got a plastic coming out that actually 10 years versus 100. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. and no splinters, no, no, none of it left. Like at the time of after 10 years, it's gone. So this is a massive thing for me. Things that you don't necessarily say as a company, you do though. So a lot of people say, oh, but they're still using plastic, rah, rah, rah. And they don't know this little- Oh, mate, I want out of plastic big time. But this is the thing. A lot of people don't know that you're necessarily taking these steps and it's awesome to see. And it's also true in the the sense that all of your products don't contain the nasties that a lot of people are trying to steer clear of. You don't promote that on everything that you do, but it's there. If you take a little bit of effort to go research more about body science and more into the actual ingredients of every single one of your products, you will see that not only do you care about the packaging, you also care about what's in it. You care about how it's going to make the the consumer feel. Whereas I feel a lot of people these days, it doesn't really matter if things are packaged poorly or if things have fillers in them or gums or really bad flavors that aren't necessarily good for us. People are just going to want to put it in. Whereas you guys don't. And that's what I really, really, really feel is like a massive change in this game. Well, people don't understand, like we've copped a 24% increase in pricing, which we haven't passed on due to making the walls thinner means Mm. they've got to slow machines down all the things that happen. And so it's it's actually come at a higher cost to the company to actually make that product. But we've been working heavily on pulling plastics from the base and and leveling it out through the product Mm. so that we can keep that low plastic plastic density while still having. The big thing is come 2021, we will be 100% biodegradable plastic. Wow. So yeah, like we won't be out of plastic, but 10 years Mm. gone, Mm. you know, I'm I'm happy with that. So 2021, we're locking that in. That's all, that's the whole range. We will start bringing out from April. Awesome. Biodegradable packaging. That's amazing. Because everyone always says that is literally the number one thing they go, oh yeah, but your protein's still in plastic. I'm and a, I tell them this backstory and they go, I'm a oh, dad with kids. I get it. I, yeah. I don't want, I don't want, pla- I, I hate landfill. I see landfill. Well, you surf every it. morning. Yeah, it's not. And if you hang out in Bali, or, like I do a lot and do that type of thing too, mm. it's just not right. You mm. get a true feel for what plastic actually does to the environment over there. You don't really see it here because we've got, you know, great garbage systems and stuff. Mm. Mm. And obviously they hide a lot of it in buildings and don't tell us as we've all seen <laughs> on the news. But mate, let's, let's stop talking about plastic. Let's talk about protein. We get asked a lot, you know, do I need a protein powder? Now, let's- Straight from I, the- from- I just want to say something. It's always- is important to remember this is a supplement mm, okay mm. so now do i need a protein powder so yeah do i need a protein powder no one needs anything mm. just full stop but will you benefit from a protein powder being plant-based um and vegan mm. in my honest opinion yes you will benefit the reason i say that is a supplements the word supplement gets thrown around yeah. and people think that they can just buy something and it's this wonderful magical cure to all of their issues it's just simply not the case a supplement is there to supplement your already good diet. It's about nutritional gaps. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And it's kind of bridging that little, because being being vegan, it is hard to get your protein requirements if you're constantly eating out. That's what mm-hmm. I find. You go to a lot of vegan restaurants and they're packed with carbohydrates and fats, but very minimal protein. Yep. When you're eating at home, you can chuck in one, two, three cans of beans. You can, you can chop up a whole block of tofu or whatever. You'll be able to get your protein requirements. But a protein powder for me is super, super important because it just allows that little safety net to know and ensure that I'm A, going to be getting a complete protein source in my diet, which Body Science's vegan protein is, and also that I'm going to be receiving all my nine essential amino acids in in the event that I may not eat an abundance of vegetables that day or a variety of protein sources. So for me, yes, I think a vegan protein source is very, very necessary. Mate, one of the big things that people say about eating meat versus plant-based is not just your protein requirement, but it, they start happening on leucine. You know, our, our protein has 2.6 grams of leucine in a serve. So you're hitting some great numbers there on a daily basis. And for those of you who don't really understand what that means, it's about protein synthesis, which Mm. is about using protein. Well, yeah, and leucine is your number one of the big three that is going to be helping your muscle building process. And with 2.6 grams, it's usually recommended 2,000 to 5,000 milligrams. So you're in that range, which is beautiful. And a lot of proteins barely even (laughs) contain high levels of leucine. They just chuck in the other ones to say, look, we've got amino acids in there. So that is really uh, beneficial for vegans to understand as well because a lot of the time vegans get told that they're not going to be getting these essential amino acids or um, these certain complete protein sources because you're not consuming animal proteins. A, that's simply not the case. But if you want to go then take that extra step and prove them wrong, be like, okay, well, I'm taking it in a supplement form anyway. So now where can you get me? My supplements are life hacks to me. I mean, I sell supplement. I get that. I'm I'm a seller of supplements. Mm. But to me, it's all about life hacks. Oh, and, it is. And it's about insurance policies. Like I know I can get X grams of protein and yep. 2.6 grams of leucine. Yep. When I start looking in 
in a restaurant or eating on the run or mm. whatever I'm doing. I have no idea. Oh, yeah. that's uh, For me personally, this morning I flew up here on the plane. I got a six o'clock flight from Sydney. And How is Pico's plane still look good? <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. I immediately put clean tea into my water bottle. Mm. Why? Simply because I went out for dinner last night for my birthday and I felt just a little bit, not iffy, but just a little bit off. And I thought about, am I going to go buy a kombucha? Is there going to be anywhere in the airport open? Not that I think that you have to have a kombucha, but the clean tea for me sorts my gut out. I drink it and I feel amazing. So it's little things like that. And it's even the clean coffee. I would choose a clean coffee over a regular coffee if I've got study to do or I know I'm about to go to the gym. So it's exactly that. It's a life hack. If I know I'm quickly going to run somewhere, I will pack a protein shake. It simply comes down to that. I like that. It's a and life I'm, hack. And I've traveled with you to Fiji. We've been on surf trips together and he does pack that No, seriously. Oh, well, how many Everything. bars did I pack? I packed bars, <clears throat> balls, protein powder. You had the whole resort. Everything. Every night I would do it. Only because <clears throat> it provides you just sense of safety and security because you know that you're getting in what you need daily to feel more optimal and to feel like a healthy human. I'm on the water eight hours a day too, mate. It was big, oh, big days. Oh, big days, yeah. So let's talk. Let's get straight into the, one of the big questions. And I'm going to read some questions out that come through our customer service team. How should I consume protein powder? All right. I'm going to give you- I know you... everyone laughs when in the in the industry, they go, are they serious? But- Well, you just eat it. No, <laughs> the, 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 the three main ways that I like to consume protein powder are just with water. Now, mm-hmm. a lot of vegan protein powders taste horrible in water. Body Science's vegan proteins do not taste horrible. Give it a try. I say this to everyone. They're like, no, that's disgusting, whatever. I want to have it with a milk, obviously a vegan milk, but you can just have it with water. Shake it up, drink it. Uh, the second one is oats. You just warm your oats up either on a stove or a microwave, wait till they're nice and hot, chuck your protein powder in, stir it together, and it's like an ooey gooey kind of dessert. Is this, I love is it. this something for spoon or is that a drink? Spoon. spoon okay, eat so, it. so it's a breakfast hack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Breakfast hack. You yep. stir it into your oats. Claire at Body Science, I often smell her stirring in her clean vegan protein into her porridge. It's a great. A lot of the crew here does it. It's got and a the, great density and it's got that earthy taste, oh, which works with amazing. Those, yeah. Just chuck a little bit of peanut butter. Again, mm. amazing that you're getting something now with peanut butter in it. Third way is a smoothie. I really like to put a basic flavor protein. So like the vanilla protein into a smoothie or the berry coconut into a smoothie. I and mean, it's just really simple. It adds protein into the smoothie, which you're getting all your greens, all your fruits, vitamins and minerals, hey, what's your favorite smoothie at the moment? Have you got one on your website? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My favorite smoothie is, to be honest, just like a banana berry smoothie. I like the berry coconut uh, protein in smoothies. That's probably my favorite. Uh, but if I'm cooking anything else, it's always with salted caramel or vanilla. Um, if I'm making my porridge and it's staple is salted caramel with just with, with just with water. Nice. It'll beat anyone's. Now I just dropped your website, but didn't say what it's 21 days. To 21 days to vegan.com.au. Two one. Days number two. Two. Vegan. Vegan.com.au. And then you can read all these little uh, things that I mentioned. So everything about protein, uh, everything about <laughs> vegan iron, B12, <laughs> calcium, oat milks, whatever. Got it. But also another thing, how to take it, make sure you're using 45 grams of protein because there isn't a scoop in the clean vegan protein and the thing that you've got to- Oh, we're trying, like I get hammered on that, but I'm just trying to reduce the plastic footprint, mate. No, I, I completely agree it's with like it. Probably going to have a crack at me then. No, someone said it to me the other day. They was like, oh, why isn't there a scoop? And then they turn it around and read, oh, it's the vegan one. That's probably why they don't have a scoop. <laughs> and I said, yeah, you're 100% right. It's, it's a I'm seriously thinking about putting an eight cent scoop. For those people out there that think we're skimping, it's eight cents. I'm <laughs> thinking about putting one in, but I'm adding to landfill. No, that's, well, that's the thing. I like it. And it's it's re- usable just to use your metal spoon from home. But make sure you're doing three heap tablespoons because yeah. that's on average 45 grams. Well, that was the next question we could ask. I'm glad you jumped to it. It's how much protein should I take? So you're saying three heap spoons? Yep, three heap spoons. So that's giving you uh, around your 30 grams of protein, isn't 30 it? 30 grams of protein in each serve. And there are days where I have easily two scoops of this. I'll make my porridge in the morning and I'll maybe have a protein shake if I'm on the go or I'm just hungry or I just want something to tie me over. I would never really say have more than two serves of a protein powder in a day just because people- Well, you got to look at your diet then. You look at yeah. what you're doing. I mean, yeah. I, I get then it when people are hacking, when they're in a rush, yep. those days. But if you're doing that every day, you need to look at what you're well, doing. that's the thing. That's when you're taking supplement too far mm-hmm. and you're trying to rely on the supplements to actually counteract your bad diet. I and mean, that's a big, big Or no, vegan no. may not be your diet too. Like, I don't give I, that I, look. I highly disagree. Yeah. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> let's, let's start with the next big question. When should I take a protein powder? Yeah, okay. So the bro science always says you've got to take it in your anabolic window 30 minutes after training. A lot of pros and cons on that in science these days, but I do know that all of the elite football teams still take protein after training. Yeah, straight away. And, I, and I don't-, I don't I'm um, a fan. There's a lot of people here that will say there's some people out there who have discredited that and just get it in during the day. Well, I am, I'm a little bit half-half. I'm going to just get it in during the day and kind of take it with a carb source after training. I do think carbs are a little bit more important after 
training than just a protein shake because the protein is there to essentially rebuild after you've done the training. The carbohydrates is to completely refill your muscles straight away. So are you um, using like an almond milk or something for that? Or are uh, you- With my carbohydrate source, it's usually just like a banana or a piece of fruit, yep. a really simple sugar just to get into my muscles and to restore glycogen stores. And then I'll be having my protein shake. So, I mean, it really boils down to when you can get it in. It's kind of saying, when should I train? If you're someone that wakes up and is ready to train, train in the morning. If you can't train in the morning, train in the afternoon. So that's just a preference thing. Unless you're an elite athlete, I would consider consulting your dietitian or whatever. But I would say try and get something in within two hours of training, yep. either side. Yeah, I agree with that. Mate, the big thing here is to tidy too. Like, definitely, definitely. Don't feel hungry. Like, no, never, you, never feel hungry. Eat if, when you, if you can't eat it, drink it. That's a beautiful little motto. Yeah. Well, if you can eat it first, eat it. Well, yeah, then, yeah, for sure. And then use it as a supplement if you can't. So. Yeah, and it's just beautiful. 30 grams of protein in a hit, being vegan especially. It's that too, mate. We've got to go on about that leucine level because it is. Yeah, I should write a blog on leucine because leucine is a very underrated, well, not underrated, but it's a very underaccomplished amino acid because people just focus on all of them. Yeah, yeah. But there are ones that are obviously more important than others, and which is amazing that there's 2.6 grams to reiterate. So, mate, what else is in protein powder is a question that comes to us a lot because ours tastes good. We should probably talk about what's not in our protein powder. Uh, I like that. Yeah. I like that. That's the number one thing. So, it's on 21 Days to Vegan, I have written an article about protein and the massive thing for me is you know me well and mm. I don't love to eat a lot of things with preservatives and fillers and gums and an abundance of based. sugar. Yeah, so I like to eat a lot of healthy whole foods without packages, etc. And for me, when I remember first looking at the clean vegan protein and going, wow, this has really got what it says it is. It's a clean, vegan, wholesome source of protein. It's got no gums, it's got no fillers, it's got none of those artificial flavors, none of those nasty added sugars and it's a protein that doesn't irritate your gut, which for me is hugely important. And I put that down to the fact that this protein has almost 10, were we talking about before, almost 10 sources of protein. Start looking at the ancient grains, pea, you've got your rice, yeah. you've got your amaranth, amaranth buckwheat, wheat, millet, yep. chia, yep. she's your testimony now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quinoa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So for me, that's a massive- Wow, that was a bit of pressure there. Yeah. Um, Mate, it's really easy to make a soy-based protein. Soy is- Definitely. I, I'm, I'm a fan of soy. A lot me of people too. hate soy. Me too. The Australian fitness market hates soy. Well, they know, think it's uh, something that's going to give them man boobs, but in fact, it's a really good phytoestrogen that lowers your levels of uh, estrogen and increases your levels of testosterone. But we don't need to go into that because I'm sure there'll be people out there yeah, saying some no. Some haters going to come back on that one, <laughs> just so you know. But yeah, no, so it's got a, a whole range of these protein sources. So you're not going to get an irritated gut from one specific source and you're going to be hinting, hitting a complete source of protein, which again is impossible for vegans to come by apparently. <laughs> so we've just, we've just laid that to rest right there. Look, all in all, it's a great source of protein that accessible to everyone, tastes amazing, phenomenal actually I'd even go. And it's just super easy on your gut. Yeah. And that for me is a massive thing. And I take clean tea every single day. So I know that I'm always looking after my gut health and making sure I'm in perfect harmony and functioning optimally. But for me, a protein that isn't going to disturb you is what you want. Okay. Because you, you want to be able to train the next day. You want to be able to feel good throughout the day. Well, one of the exciting things that's in it is digizyme, digestive enzyme. It's really hard to get a plant-based digestive Digi- enzyme because- Which doesn't you have- You can tell people where it comes from. Well, it's usually dairy products. Exactly. So yeah, that's uh, and that's got the five in there. It covers everything. Yeah. And how many times have I asked you, is that is that digestive enzyme from a dairy product? And everyone's going to have to check the website or whatever. And then they finally come back and say it's vegan. So it's am- it's amazing that and you- And that was the reason we use, we use that in all of our products. Yeah. I, I love, look, it's highly researched. I've done research on mm. DOMS as well, mm. using it. But the big thing is it's very hard to get a plant-based digestive enzyme. I know. So that's a big one. You can get singles, but to get all of them, mm. yeah. Is good. And then obviously the other thing we're going to need is a uh, prebiotic. So yeah, again, really good for your gut. It helps, aids that digestion. It makes you feel a bit full too. Like you get, you well, that's feel the thing. You know when you, well, back in the day, if you've mm. ever had a protein and you've just gone around those supplement expos or whatever and just tried things and you get that really weird kind of iffy feeling in your stomach. I honestly think that the, the, the digestive enzymes and the prebiotics in clean vegan protein allow your body to feel really satisfied, but you never get an overwhelming sense of, oh my gosh, something's hitting my gut right now and my body's struggling. So that's a massive reason why I'm into clean vegan protein. So for all it vegans- It helps break down starch too, mate. When you're living, like you live a very raw diet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So starch, for some, if, if I was to do your diet next week, mm. I would feel like someone stuck a pump oh. where they shouldn't have stuck a pump. Yeah, well, you the know? girl uh, down at my gym in Kayama, she recently said to me, oh, I want to start going more plant-based. And she came in, she said, Alex, like, I feel like my, my stomach feels like a little bit like a balloon at the moment. And I was like, well, no doubt you've been eating a lot more fiber, a mm. lot more starchy foods than you regularly have. And yeah. she said, yeah, I have. So yeah, it does come down to that. And it comes down to the knowledge of what you need to do. So taking things with prebiotics in them, taking digestive enzymes, 
enzymes to allow that extra excess fiber to make its way through your body and to make sure that you're extracting the nutrients from that because you don't want to just eat all this fiber and just have a sore tummy and then it runs out the other end. Yeah, exactly. You want to make sure you're extracting all that nutrients. Yeah, exactly. Mate, the other thing people ask us is protein powder expensive. You, you, I've traveled with you mm. and you are you're hard work to travel with. Well, I'm not having to go at you there. Like, no, no, no. Very in, light in, traveler. In lounges, in places like everyone, ha- and because you're living a vegan lifestyle and because of your belief system, mm, mm. You, you question everything. Oh, yeah. And people are constantly rebuilding what is already built. Yep. So my comment to that is no, it's not because it's pretty simple to buy protein powder, mm, take mm, some scoops. Mm. But what are your thoughts? So for me, protein powder for me has always been not expensive, but vegan protein powder is usually on average more expensive. I don't view it as expensive because what you just said, it's an invaluable tool when you're traveling. I learned so much about living with a vegan when we traveled. It was it blew me away. Like, Well, it's just super helpful. For, well, when we were in Fiji, for example, my breakfast he was just- He will grab two to three tins of beans and yeah. put it in his- like Salads. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it blew me away. Like the, the effort you had to go to and the cost of being a vegan was- Well, the, and this is the thing. So for breakfast, most of the time in Fiji, I, I'd eat my massive fruit salad, but then I, mm. I was smashing the protein down my little water bottle before yep. we got onto the boat purely because I knew that I wasn't probably going to be eating for a few hours and I wanted something to tie me over. But it's invaluable when you're traveling and it's just invaluable in terms of having it at home, being able to just chuck it in. Because if you think of uh, some vegan protein sources, if you're out, it may cost you $4 extra to get a little bit extra tofu on your meal. So for me, do I think vegan protein powder is expensive? No, because of the benefits it allows you to reap in your everyday lifestyle. So mate, before we close this uh, podcast down, 21daystovegan.com.au, what's some interesting things we can look at there and listen to and watch? What do you got up there? Yeah, it would be amazing. Well, you can go on to the 21 Days to Vegan podcast as well, where I just discussed some little little topics that are very contentious in the vegan, let's call it atmosphere. And you can go onto the, the website where they've got a bunch of blogs uh, that deconstruct the same kind of things. You can look at a few inspirational figures, just like my six foot eight friend, who's a blokey bloke, beard like Ned Kelly, who's now a really, really Australian renowned fighter. And you can just read stories about why certain people went vegan, how they found their transition and what kind of made things easier. Just to allow you to feel a little bit more a part of a community when you're making your transition. So, mate, 21 days to vegan, what's the ethos here? Like, obviously, you're talking 21 days to vegan. Why? Well, I just want everyone to become a healthier and happier you yeah, nice. um, and function as a more optimal human being. <laughs> I love plants. Well, there's a lime tree in your office that I'm staring at right now, so I know you do. <laughs> well, mate, there's a lime tree in my office because we've just launched a lemon lime TX100. Which we're sipping right now, and it Green is gorgeous. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, very nice. You signed off on that with us. We did that back in October, I think. Yes. Yeah. I so remember that. It's taken a while to get to market, but- Perfection takes time, mate. Oh, I've got to make sure you guys- are growing faster than Apple. Well, get on board. Bodyscience.com.au is where you will be able to read more about our vegan protein. Jump on Alex's site and start to date with what's happening in that 1.6% of the population. Yeah. We're in 2020 now, so it's going to be uh, ever increasing. It you is. Just watch. It's, it's getting bigger and bigger, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bigger than Apple. Bigger than Apple. Well, it increased. The business side of being vegan increased 600% in 2019, and that's bigger than any other industry. Wow. So okay. when Apple had their big boom, it still wasn't 600%, which is pretty interesting. That's that's standpoint. massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice stat. Well, it's nice for the vegans because it puts a little grin, you know, just makes everything that we're doing that little bit more worth it. Oh, everyone's win. Get on board. Thanks out. Thanks for coming on board, mate. And let's uh, let's do some more of this soon. Awesome. Today's podcast was brought to you by our partners in Fit, Happy and Healthy, ASN, Nutrition Warehouse, DY Discount Vitamins, Fat Burners Only, Evelyn Fay, Mr. Supplement, or find a retailer online at bodyscience.com.au forward slash retailers.